Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV, guys. Today we're going to be checking out an amazing video. This is going to be, she went with the Bible to convert Muslims. Then look what happened. Most amazing story, guys. I know it's going to be amazing. So guys, let's check this out together. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Sabil Ahmad. And next to me is a sister. When I heard her story, I was saying, amazing story. Our Christian brothers and sisters, they need to hear it. People of humanity, they need to hear it. I want her to introduce herself and mention her profound story, inshallah. My name is Daisy, and I grew, grew up in a Catholic family. I had my sister as a nun, my uncles are priests. We were very devout Irish Catholics. We went to daily mass. And I, was, I grew up in a family and in a culture where we were learning that Islam was a very barbaric religion. It, it had a lot of cruelty. The people didn't know anything about Jesus or the love of Christ and had no peace in them. Um, and then I was offered a, a job position over in Saudi Arabia where I worked with the children and took care of the preschool in the American Embassy. And as I was going there, we loaded up my suitcase with Bibles and uh, rosaries. We brought them over. So, so your priest mentioned to you, you're going to this country of the Muslims. They reject Jesus. They don't believe in Jesus. They need to be saved. So then you packed your Bibles with you. Yes, exactly. And that they that we needed to show them the love of Jesus. That was the main reason. And that, that would change their whole culture and they would be a very loving culture. So, so you were really cautious when you went there? Uh, yeah, I was told that I might be put in jail for this too because they don't allow Christianity or any or type for of... taking the Bibles. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, and the rosaries in. So what happened at the airport? Well, they, they asked if they could keep the suitcase full of Bibles and um, told me to come back the next day. They just needed to make sure they were Bibles. And so the next day I thought I probably wouldn't get them, went back to the airport, and they gave me the suitcase with all the Bibles and the rosaries. <laughs> from so your intention when you went to Saudi Arabia was to meet the Muslims and to share the message of Jesus with them. Jesus being what, Lord and Savior? Yes, exactly. <laughs> that, was the, that was my whole plan. It was like a missionary work at the same time and I when I got over there I, you know I started telling them I thought I'll teach them about Jesus and I started sharing the miracles of Jesus with them and then they said what about this miracle what about when Jesus was a baby and he protected his mother's honor and talked as an infant so, so the Muslims mentioned to you that there are miracles in the Quran, <laughs> right? And they showed you from the Quran, I guess. Yes, and they showed me more miracles than what I had learned. So I, I thought maybe I missed it somehow. And I even called my family in America and said, was I asleep during church or something? Because <laughs> I missed a massive miracle, a miracle that was, you know, very great. And then I also was told about a bird made out of clay and uh, Jesus blew life into him. And I said, was the bird dead? And they said, no, there wasn't even a bird. It was out. Of, it was wasn't even dead it was nothing and it became life and so um, I was learning more miracles than I had learned as a Christian for Jesus that I went to teach them about they ended up teaching me more about Jesus than what I had learned being a Christian and that's kind of where a lot of my interest sparked because I thought oh, wait and then we went on about Mary too because I thought they don't know that she's a virgin and this pure woman and they treat women terrible we have and what I found was that they had a whole chapter in the Quran on Mary and when I heard it and it was translated to me all I could do was cry. It was the most beautiful sir I've ever heard. Chapter number Sh 19. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, um, you and may know it and uh, our Christian brothers and sisters, they'll be amazed to find out that uh, Mary is the only lady is mentioned by name in the Quran. Right? She's the only one, not the mother of Muhammad, peace be upon him, not his wife or daughter or any believing ladies of that time. Mary who came 600 years before Muhammad, peace be upon him. She's mentioned 32 times in the Quran. And do you know how many times in the Bible? Zero? No, no, she's mentioned. <laughs> she's mentioned. She's mentioned. It she's mentioned. No, it has to be something, right? She's mentioned 18 times. Oh, one eight. Oh, okay. And then there is a, a passage in the Quran, chapter 3, verse number 42, in which God sent an angel to Mary, Mother Mary. And the angel is saying, so this is English, that, uh, oh Mary, God has chosen you. God has purified you and God has chosen you above all the ladies. 
-hmm. So look at the love, the honor, the respect Muslims give her to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Right. So these are some of the passages that you may have read. Yes, yeah, that, that was a, it had a big effect on, and not only that, but then my experience of living there and being with the people, the Muslims, that I was thinking was, you know, I was actually, I, I hate to say this, but I hated Muslims. I thought they were terrible people. I, in my, what I had been taught was that they, you know, weren't so nice and very cruel and barbaric people. Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> media had a big part in it and if you you know that, that but what was happening was I was learning the opposite and that's what threw me completely because everything that I was told the opposite was happening and it wasn't just one thing it was over and over it was um, the people's hospitality the, the generosity the respect for my religion how respectful they were as to my Christianity so everything that piled up it just it, it didn't stop it just kept flowing like that. You know, as you mentioned about Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, it's important that uh, the miracles of Jesus are mentioned many times in the Quran. And also it's really important for all the viewers to find out that any miracle the Quran speaks about Jesus, peace be upon him, or any prophet, you know, Allah says, God says, it is coming with the permission, with the power of Allah. So Jesus, any miracle that he did, uh, healing the, bl the blind, the lepers, the sick, raising people from the dead or making bursts of clay and breathing in, into them and they fly off. Every single miracle, it was God who was doing that miracle. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that our focus should be God. The power is God. The Almighty is God. Jesus was a messenger, a prophet. Right. So per perhaps that's what you also read in the Quran. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that was a big part of it. And I think uh, also, when I went home, I had to, you know, come back to the church and face the priest and my parents and tell them these miracles, which they uh, still denied or said there's no such thing. But I thought, how could you deny such a beautiful miracle? This is a beautiful thing about Jesus. And and I, w I from there, I went to the monks, the Benedictine monks. I actually lived once there for a while. Here. Yes, once I came okay. back. I'm sorry. Uh, I went to my priest, to my parish priest, who sent me because he thought, okay, she, she must be crazy because she's talking about this guy named Muhammad who is crazy so they said you know um, um, I hate to say that it sounds so bad to say that now but they thought he was they told me if today's day and time if we were to have Muhammad here we would diagnose him with schizophrenia and so do you want to follow a schizophrenic so I would go back and forth with these with my church and then finally they sent me to the Benedictine monks at the Prince of Peace Abbey in California and I stayed there for a while Actually, seven years I went back and forth and finally one of the priests came to me and said if you have a call in your heart it doesn't matter what I tell you it doesn't matter what the bishop tells you what the cardinal even the pope himself you need to follow the call from God in your heart and that's when my journey really began that's a wonderful advice yeah. I'm surprised that uh, they mentioned that so then uh, perhaps well, he did, he <laughs> <laughs> He, he did say to me after, as soon as he said it, was that he might lose his position in the church for saying that really? to me. And he, and he said, but because I came to him with that, he had to say it. So then what, uh, when did you take your shahada eventually? Uh, it took quite a while because uh, not even uh, the, what was hard was my family to come back to the strong Irish Catholic family and then they're the ones who took me to the priest who took me to the nun who said we're going to take you to a psychiatrist if you don't stop oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because they thought that, and they would say why do you want to be abused why would you follow a religion that is suppress women and it, there must be something mentally wrong that you want to be abused when you can be free as a Christian but I found my true freedom came as a Muslim that's when I really became free Free. <laughs> oh, I don't have to worry about anything. It, it, you're free from all the superficial stuff that you go through the other way. So what were some of uh, women's rights that you heard from the Muslims or from the Quran that you said, oh. you know, wow. I was so much deceived. <laughs> yeah, lots say? of deception. That's a good word, brother. Um, the biggest one for me that I love, and I think all women will love, that you get to keep your inheritance and your money that you earn. It's all yours. <laughs> yeah. And you don't have to spend it at all on the men. On the, it's all yours. And I thought, oh, I really like that. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I, I always say, whatever our wife or any lady she earns belongs to her. Whatever the husband earns also belongs to her. She's the queen of the house. 
Alhamdulillah, only in Islam, you know, Allah is so merciful, such a wise, guiding, uh, almighty God. So then what led you towards uh, closer to, you know, reciting the Shahada? Um, th pretty much after the priest said that to me, that was like, uh, that was a big thing. The, the other thing was, I still, I thought I could do both then at that point. I thought, okay, I'll, I'll, because they said, you know, I'll keep Jesus and I'll keep Muhammad. They're both great guys and we'll try to do both. We'll do Christianity and Islam. So I ha actually had my children in a Bible camp and the nun said to me, y you know, are you still thinking about this guy named Muhammad? And I said, oh yeah, of course. And she she said, well, today might be a little tricky because we're going to teach the kids that Jesus is God and God is Jesus. And I said, oh, that, yeah, we can't do that. And she said, no, we have to do that. So at that point, I just took the kids by the hand and got up and said, thank you very much. And I never went back to the church because that's when the light went on. Like, I can't, I can't do it. There's something inside of me that I realized, uh, you know, Jesus is the greatest prophet. But he is not God. God is God. And God is one. So that is the main message that also of Jesus, peace be upon him. Yeah, fine, he did miracles. He was a mighty prophet. But it's so important for us to know what was the main message of all of these mighty prophets of God. May that be Noah, uh, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them. As the Quran says, and you may have seen that in the Quran, chapter 3, verse number 51, Allah says, Inna Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum fa'budu haza sirata mustaqim. So Isa alayhi salam, Jesus is saying in the Quran, quoted in the Quran by God, that verily Allah is my Lord and your Lord. Worship Him alone, that is the straight path. The second two and I learned, we went into a Friday prayer together and just said... We were at in the Saudi Arabia or here? No, here, back here in okay, the U.S. I, went, I ended up going to the ICN mosque and then over to the Orland Park Prayer Center and took my shahada and uh, learned how to pray and uh, complete Islam with my children at the same time. We did it together, which was a beautiful experience for us, a Mashallah. beautiful experience. What message that you have, especially for the Christian brothers and sisters? Right now, they are about to celebrate their Christmas on the 25th of December. And now, since you know both from the Christian side and the Muslim side, the status of Jesus, peace be upon him, what message that you have for the Christian brothers and sisters? Well, I'd like to say, it sounds funny, but I became more in love with Jesus through Islam. I, and that the what you might hear out there is definitely not what Islam is if you're watching certain media channels or reading different things. It, it's better to read the Quran if you can or come into the mosque, the open house, call Gain Peace. They have a wonderful hotline with Dr. Sabil and get the truth of Islam. Know it, know it yourself before you, you know, make judgments on it because I myself was one that hated Muslims and I'm sorry to say that but thought Islam was a disgusting religion and I became a Muslim and I alhamdulillah it's the best thing of my life. I couldn't be happier. And I love being Catholic. I, I, I respect the Catholics. I loved my religion before. So um, please get the information, the correct information. Make sure you're not getting it from the wrong sources. Get it from the people themselves. Mashallah. The beauty is in the people. Very good. Mashallah. So it's really important. You know, you mentioned one comment that I have to give up my Jesus but in Islam, as you embrace it, you don't have to give up Jesus. You can bring your Jesus the right way as a mighty prophet of Allah, with the message of oneness of Allah. So any Christian who is watching up there, you don't have to give up Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. A Muslim cannot be a Muslim if we don't love, admire, and believe in the prophethood and the message of Jesus, peace be upon him. So any Christian... Our brothers and sisters out there, you have the best of both worlds. You can bring in the Jesus and now you have the right perspective of who Jesus was and who Allah God is. So I hope and pray that anyone who is listening, not yet a Muslim, reach out to gain peace. Contact the local masjid. Approach a practicing Muslim. If you have questions, if you have doubts, don't just blindly believe the media, the Fox News, the fake news, the White House. Come and reach out to the Muslims and read the Quran on your own. We can send you a free copy of the Quran. Just call us 1-800-662-ISLAM and you will find out that Islam is the message that Jesus, peace be upon him, used to preach to his people, the message of oneness of God. With that again, welcome to Islam, Sister Daisy. And uh, may Allah, welcome. May Allah preserve you and all of us in Islam. 
may god help us not only to practice islam but to share this wonderful message with all our brothers and sisters in humanity assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah guys <coughs> come to the end of this guys and i tell you this was beautiful but I'll start from the beginning she actually said she hated islam and this is one thing that i can tell you most christian most i won't say most christian hate islam but we just feel you guys are practicing the wrong thing and the same way you feel christians are practicing the wrong thing it's feel we are idol worshippers but let's start from the beginning she feel i feel when I came to know about Islam, guys, like, I knew about it when I was young, because my brother actually went to a military school, so, like, he actually talked a little bit about the religion, you see, so it was, it said, well, they were calm, they were peaceful, and we start watching movies, you see, you were sending, I mean, to kill people that are speaking Arabic and are praying, you see, it's like, and the thing is that most of those movies, most of the, what would I call, most of the terrorists, they dress like Islam, they dress like Muslims, and they actually pray even when they're about to shoot gun like Muslims. And it's, it's kind of strange because I feel they're trying to push that narrative that Islam is wrong. And... It kind of got to a lot of people, like a lot of people. But she finding out about the religion is beautiful. And I want to be honest with you, this is something about Christians. Some Pentecostals like myself don't really feel Catholics are practicing the right thing because God sent us to do this world to multiply. But I don't know. I don't know, but I can tell you. Some places I don't feel Catholic are practicing the right thing, and some Catholics feel Pentecostals are practicing the wrong thing. And I will say one thing: Jesus never preached a religion. Yes, he was just like pray to God, surrender all to God, believe in Him, respect God, put God first. I don't think he preached a religion. He just left give us his message and we are supposed to do with it what we want to do with it i won't say if you're christian you go to heaven if you're muslim you go to heaven i just feel heaven or jannah yes but i just feel you have to do great things you have to live a certain way believe in jesus follow the commandment yeah you go to jannah Guys, come to the end of the video. Please tell me what you think about this. Think what you think about Catholic. Tell me what you think about Pentecostal. Guys, I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.